often we look at everything out there and not ourselves. We look at the systems that are not working, we look at the policies that are not working, we look at the government that's not delivering, we look, we look at everything except to look at ourselves. And if only we were to begin by looking at ourselves and what sort of contribution can we make and to be able to make that contribution, what change do I need to make? And even to go further as to what obstacles do I bring into the process that I am not able to bring about a change. If an educator shouts at learners and belittles learners, then the child will role model that. But if the educator is more respectful, addresses the learner in a certain way, and then introduces the program to the learners, they can see from the educator's behaviour how they should behave towards each other. Self-awareness is critical to restorative justice being successful. We do a lot of work with the older students in particular it's on understanding their personality and um, why they make the choices they do, how they learn, and therefore are they behaving in a healthy way for the, through their personalities. It is more of an inclusive approach and that inclusive approach starts with the individual. Once you understand yourself and how you interact with other individuals and how the challenges that you face with those individuals, how you're able to resolve them, that then cascades to being able to work within a group. And being able to work within a group, you are able to work within a school, but it has to start from an individual, and that's the idea. We've worked with students one-on-one, -on -one. we've worked with groups, and at one stage I've worked with a whole year level and teachers after an incident. So that gives you a bit of a, a feeling of its breadth. Restorative justice is a very adaptive system. Self-reflection is a key component. If a teacher gets something wrong in a class, the teacher has to be willing to sit down and think about it and say, well, what could I have done differently? How else could I have dealt with the child who didn't do their homework? How else could I have dealt with Johnny when he set fire to Pete's suitcase? You have to be saying, OK, I tried that and the class still swung from the chandeliers and didn't do what I wanted to do. Let me try this next time. And you can't keep trying to do the same things wrong every day. You've got to say what worked, what didn't work. This class responds this way, this class doesn't. Absent that self-reflection, there is no growth in this regard. Implementing this system is about culture change. Everyone knows that is difficult. You have to invest in professional development and training and skills development for your teachers. You can't just drop them in this. So there's a lot of preparatory work as you're bringing it in around understandings of behaviour and psychology and training in the practice, the process, the questions, the language, and then learning together and meeting the challenges. And, and when you feel vulnerable and when you feel that you haven't done it well and you've, and you've learnt something from it, coming together again and, and debriefing and sharing and moving on and hoping to be better the next time. So just even at those levels, the implementation is you know, huge. There will be challenges. I think one of the things that we, we emphasise within uh, conflict resolution is that conflict is part of our lives. So there will be moments where we are in conflict, but the most important thing is how do we deal with our differences? How do we deal with conflicts? If we can teach those skills, and young people grow knowing how to deal with differences, then we can see a, a better generation tomorrow. As we focus on learners, we need to make sure that the teachers that we are training are able to use restorative approaches. They are trained in conflict resolution skills. And so they go into the school, they bring something new and something fresh, and they create a culture of peace and a culture of understanding and resolving conflicts in an amicable manner. It's not to say we're not without problems in the far discipline is concerned, but there are far fewer problems and more manageable ones for this kind of approach. If you look at the values of restorative justice, it makes sense. Every human being wants to be treated that way. It doesn't make sense not to. But why resist it? To put it bluntly, it's laziness to adapt to something new. It means hard work and hard work from a thought process, hard work from an attitude process. So. The reason people resist, as with any new thing, is that change is not easy. Change is scary, uh, because change means changing yourself as well. Conflict management 
and the restorative justice, it's not an event. It is a process. It is something that you grow into. And the more you do it, the more it becomes second nature. It, it starts with the training. It has to start with the training because this training brings knowledge and exposes you to the skills and you start practicing the skills within the workshop itself. From the workshop you go to the real environment. You go practice, you come back and you talk about the challenges that you have experienced and once we have discussed those challenges you receive new skills, new knowledge and we answer some of the questions that one has brought from the uh, environment where they were working and you go back again to practice. We do a lot of work on understanding how children and students meet their needs, whether they're power needs or a sense of belonging and whether that be something as simple as things are not growing well at home and so they're manifesting some powerlessness at school to something serious like a mental health disorder and self-harm and so on. So the whole gamut. The restorative approach requires a lot of planning. It requires um, a lot of vulnerability from a teacher perspective because you need to be open and you need to be able to be on equal footing at times with the learners um, to be able to understand each other. And so you build that relationship. You cannot build a relationship from a, a point of view where you remain an adult who's aloof. You need to be closer and build that relationship. Even from the earliest age, by being able to be involved in restorative circles and sharing problems for a start, they're able to evidence and show concern for each other and care for each other and understanding that they are different and that that's a good thing, but it means working. The process you want to lead a child through is the process of first of all acknowledging that they have done wrong. They've got to actually take responsibility for their behaviour. The next step is to get the child to see how that behaviour affects their relationship with people around them, the damage I've done to that relationship. And then to get children to try and think through, well, what can I do to repair that? What can I do to fix that? And then to forgive them. If there's no forgiveness, there's no learning. I think the really important thing is that children know there's a consequence and the consequence needs to be consistent and it needs to be fairly immediate. There needs to be modelling happening constantly. There also needs to be articulation about what is happening so that the link is made between the behaviour and the consequence and, and as much as is possible there needs to be a logic between the behaviour and, and the consequence so that that learning, that learning can happen. That goes right from the little ones who might have had an altercation out in the playground at recess time uh, through to the deeper, older adolescent issues that we deal with. The way in which you are actually going to share that which you are wanting to introduce need to be in on the same level as the individual so that they can understand, they can have buy-in and that they can actually see what the benefits is going to be of that particular program. With older students, it is through mediation and conflict resolution and through using uh, the very precise questioning approach of restorative practice. What has happened, what harm has been done and what can you do to restore or heal some of that harm? Whether it's the shame and guilt or whether it's the anger and the hurt. It is giving that voice to the people that feel bad about having done it or having had it done to them. 